speaker is Caitlin Brown. Caitlin is an artist, collaborator, and do-it-yourself curator. You may have seen Caitlin's newest piece at this weekend's Glow Festival. Ladies and gentlemen, Caitlin Brown. All right, let's go for this. <laughs> things that are transparent are close to invisible. They're things that perhaps you ignore, like the fact that we're in a theater, in a library, in downtown Calgary, and you're looking at a white screen right now. In art, transparency can mean many things, but I chose to interpret that as the things that we don't see. Like darkness, for example, is something that is quite literally unseeable. Our eyes are made to deal with only a certain amount of stimulus, and a lot of that is light. This is a work that Wayne and I made together um, that essentially night blinds you as you pass through it. The piece was made in a way that you would never know if you just came and stumbled across it. Um, it was built through a series of interviews with participants who were placed in a state of artificial darkness. And so they were interviewed in this darkness, which was a, um, an invisible state that allowed space for intimacy despite being shared. As you pass through this work, you disappear, literally. You disappear into the darkness, into the deep dark beyond. And in so doing, you overexpose your eyes, and so it is light by which the darkness grows darker. Sound is invisible or can be invisible. The origins of sound are almost always seen. Um, but if you move into spaces where sound is allowed to overtake you, then it too can become invisible, or visible in a different way. This is a work that was developed in collaboration with uh, Lane Shorty and Nikki Martins. And viewers were invited into the center of a circle of speakers who were reading into megaphones, but they were blindfolded. And so in being blindfolded, that sound is allowed extra space um, to be both invisible and visible in a different way. This piece is literally called Without Eyes, and we were reading Roald Dahl, the wonderful story of Henry Sugar, out loud to people. These are the performers, and the performers are often invisible within artworks. Um, but performance art is unique in the, in the aspect that um, it makes the artists visible in a way that they're typically not when they're presenting their work in public spaces. You can tell that I booked too little. <laughs> Speaking for every slide. Rex City is a collective that I work with, and we work in places in the city that are literally invisible. Um, and they're invisible not because they're transparent, um, but because they're forgotten. So pre-demolition spaces, abandoned spaces, forgotten spaces. Um, this was a project that was started in nine houses, three garages, and a greenhouse in Sunnyside, and has grown into a collective that still exists in spaces all over the city. Um, when the invisible is made public in this way, it becomes visible, and it's revealed, um, and to a certain extent at least, so neighborhoods look at themselves differently, and cities look at themselves hopefully differently. Artists, of course, within this space become slightly more visible than they might otherwise be. These are people functioning on the fringes. They're performers and artists and musicians. Um, yeah, and they're given space to share what they do in a public way that is also domestic and private. Sometimes cultural institutions allow things to become more visible. This was a work that I did in collaboration with Wayne um, that was literally made out of reappropriated eyeglass lenses. And it was made to celebrate the 10th anniversary of a museum in Istanbul. Um, in Istanbul, museum culture, especially contemporary art culture, is relatively new. And so we wanted to speak to the concept of cultural institutions essentially working as a lens for culture as a whole. Um, but you can see here that the piece literally takes different prescriptions and different ways of looking at the world and focuses them on the museum and reciprocally outwards towards the rest of the city. Dazzle camouflage can cause you to think that certain things are what they aren't. Um, so this is a work called In the Belly of a Bear. And from the onset of looking at the piece, um, it looks like an alien form in the landscape, but in reality, you're invited to climb up inside the belly of the beast into a fur-lined space, which is lined in fur that's primarily faux fur and also recycled um, old jackets. And in this space, you can warm up together and experience the winter in Toronto in a completely different way. 
Remarkably, this didn't burn down over the course of the exhibition. <laughs> Sometimes spaces are made invisible by our own choices. This is a piece called Nightline that was built out of a series of interviews that we did in Dawson City, Yukon, which of course has many hours of darkness in the wintertime. And so in speaking to local people, we asked them what the effects of darkness were on their everyday life. And the truth is that sometimes when you're in the dark and you're indoors looking out, you can't see the broader context of the space that you're inside of. Um, yeah, so it's, it's important to look at spaces and try and think holistically about um, shifting your perspective ever so slightly to see them properly, to see them transparently. There's always a little bit more than what we can see with our naked eye. Um, for me, an epiphany is when the invisible becomes visible, but more often than not, what we actually are seeing is something that's there and has been there all along. Um, when you think about the stars, for example, so often you can't see them with the naked eye, especially in downtown Calgary, especially in the city. It's the same way with infrastructure or other things that we're taught to not look at. Um, the city of Calgary, of course, recently cycled their streetlights for LED streetlights. So these are high pressure sodium streetlights that are essentially sitting in an elephant burial ground waiting to be recycled. We recently got our paws on a couple of them and built a new installation for Glow Festival in downtown Calgary. But in shifting our perspective on an everyday material, we changed this material and its connotations in a critical capacity ever so slightly to speak to things like light pollution and sky glow. None of us are omnipotent. There's always a veil, always something to pull back and look beyond. And we're always veiled. Each one of us is always veiled. And so it's worth bearing in mind that sometimes it's not that things are invisible, it's just that they're hidden. And so if we change the way that we see, we can see them freshly. Thanks. Caitlin Brown.